tuota, Janne, ole hyvä. Okay, thank you, Reino. Hello, all members of the Aviation Museum Society and the friends of Aviation History and Aviation Museums. I am Janne Pauni and I chair today's international seminar on Aviation Museum Exhibition Planning. Right to the start, uh, Mr. Janne Salonen, chairman of our association, warmly greets all participants and especially speakers of today. The Aviation Museum Society was founded in 1969. Its aim was to set up a national aviation museum in Finland. In 1972, a permanent aviation history exhibition was opened at Helsinki Airport. It was the beginning of the actual, actual museum, which was opened 40 years ago in 1981. The Aviation Museum Society connects people interested in history. We have approximately 1100 members. We organize membership events and trips, as well as publish books and our own membership magazine. Especially during COVID, weekly virtual lectures have been popular. We also work as a connecting link between all aviation museums in Finland. The aim of today's seminar is to inform and inspire participants and those working in the museum field. In several countries, aviation museums are constantly being renewed and we need to find good ways to develop exhibitions. This seminar will take place internationally and the presentations will be held in English. Our program today includes three interesting presentations, two from Finland and one from Norway. After each presentation, you can ask questions and comment the subjects. A chat field is available. According to the program, at least between the second and the third presentation, a break will be taken. Before I give the floor to our first speaker, I would like to tell you what has happened in aviation on this certain date 18 years ago. The next sli slide, please. In 1910, Mr. George White, later Sir George, set up an aircraft factory in Filton near Bristol. The British and Colonial Aeroplane Company was the start of the later British Aeroplane Company. It continued to develop in two parts of the British Aerospace Corporation. Today, Airbus, GKN, Aerospace and Rolls-Royce operate in Filton. And next slide. On November 26th, 2003, a Concorde supersonic passenger plane registered Alpha Fox flew the last flight of the type and landed in Filton, where it once was built. Next slide. The aircraft was placed on the edge of the field for viewing. Finally, in 2017, it was towed to its new location. Uh, next slide. The Bristol Aviation Museum was established and opened to the public two years ago in 2019. The exhibition is made up of three old First World War hangars and a new Concorde hangar. Total cost was 17 million pounds. This year, Bristol. Next slide. This year, Aerospace Bristol was selected as the best attraction in 2020 in series of UK museums. The destination is worth a visit and serves as a good example for us. And the next slide. To compare to that, an introduction. So the first presentation is the following image, which presents the layout, layout of the Finnish Aviation Museum's number one hall in August 1981. Our museum has evolved a lot since those days. Designing and modernizing museum in Vanta is ahead. Now to today's first speaker. Valeri Saltikov 
He is the head of exhibitions at the Finnish Aviation Museum. In his presentation, he will discuss various questions regarding the choice of aircraft for display as part of the exhibition project of the Finnish Aviation Museum's upcoming renovation. So, Valerie, please, word is yours. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on wherever you are following this presentation. Now, I am. I will attempt to open the presentation and boom. Ei vielä. Nyt. Hyvä. So I think you can all see this. So uh, my topic for the day is, uh, as said, choosing and preparing museum aircraft for display uh, at the new aviation museum. So I'm going to talk a little about uh, our upcoming renovation project. Uh, I say choosing and preparing, but uh, I am mainly actually focusing in the first part of choosing uh, the uh, aircraft and the questions related, because uh, we are having in the seminar, the uh, two later speakers are going to present to you uh, ready uh, or already existing case examples. So, so I think they are much more interesting. Ours is still a work in progress. So, uh, let's start with uh, a short presentation of our uh, museum. So, the Finnish Aviation Museum is a uh, specialized museum of aviation uh, with national responsibilities. This is a uh, sort of a term uh, or a, a title given to us by the uh, Ministry of Education in Finland. So basically we are uh, in responsibility of coordinating the nationwide uh, preservation of aviation heritage here in Finland. We're located in Vanta, uh, right next to the Helsinki airport. So, so this is the greater Helsinki area. Our collection covers the history of both civilian and military aviation in Finland. Uh, we have uh, objects, photographs, archive material, and a vast aviation themed library co collection as well. Uh, and currently, our permanent exhi exhibition includes uh, roughly uh, 3,000 square meters with around 60 full-size aircraft plus other large exhibits in them. Uh, in addition to that, we also have some temporary exhibition space. We are also preparing for a major renovation project. So if everything goes as planned, we are aiming to rebuild our museum and the exhibition in the near future. But why do we want to change? I personally be believe firmly in the phrase if it's not broken, don't fix it. So when we are preparing, preparing such a major renovation, we need to understand the reasons behind, behind it. We feel that our current exhibitions are a bit outdated. They are crammed and poorly suited for the needs or for our needs or the needs of our customers. But uh, of course, we also heed our listen to our customers for this. Our customers request uh, better quality premises and exhibitions. Uh, our customer feedback frequently asks for things like interactive elements and modern exhibition technology and such. But with all honesty, 
these things, uh, these are sort of nice to have things which we could live without. But the one thing we cannot live without is that our tenancy contract is expiring soon. So uh, our current contract uh, is ex expiring in 2028. And unless we find new premises until that, we are going to be on the road. So uh, that is the uh, core reason why we are preparing this renovation project. So the next question is how to solve the situation. We have been working to fi find the solution for the question for, for the past 10 years. Pretty much uh, the entire time I have worked here at the, uh, at the Aviation Museum. I, uh, I was hired in 20, uh, to 2010. And uh, uh, the renovation project was already ready uh, ongoing by that time. For the past few years, we have uh, run this project uh, in close cooperation with the city of Vanta. The current plan is to build uh, a new, new building of roughly five and a half thousand square meters, uh, of which four thousand square meters are uh, for exhibition space, uh, to the lot next door. So. Thankfully, we are not <laughs> moving that far away from our current premises. Also, something that we don't currently have, we are planning to rent external space to store our collections. Currently, we have pretty much everything uh, we have on these premises. But in the future, the plan is to have uh, separate uh, exhibition, uh, exhibition uh, premises and uh, collection premises. And uh, what the city of Vanta uh, requests or hopes from us, the new aviation museum is to become an attraction for the developing Aviapolis area that increases the value and attractiveness of the area. Uh, this area we are currently located is, is one of the uh, most rapidly developing areas in, in Finland. And uh, there are to be uh, housing, offices and, and uh, much more here around. Uh, and uh, we are to be the attraction of the area that draws people to it. So basically we should go from this to this. So in short, what is the topic for, for the day? According to the preliminary designs we have made, uh, on the new premises, uh, and I must highly underline that these are preliminary ones, uh, our new permanent exhibition can comfortably fit around 10 to 20 aircraft and other large objects. As said, our current exhibition holds uh, over 60 aircraft and other objects of the same size. This places us in quite a unique uh, position in our history. We actually have to choose which are aircraft are to be put on display and which are to be stored. Of course, even if for aircraft that are to be put in storage for now, they might yet appear in the exhibitions later on in future exhibition projects and such. So, so it's not, not about putting, to putting them into storage spaces for good. Now, uh, 
check the clock at the same time. Now, uh, I have uh, listed six different questions to consider when uh, when discussing this uh, choosing uh, this uh, process of choice as a part of an exhibition design process. And uh, these are in some order, but not necess necessarily in the final order. But I think these, uh, all of these questions are ones that should be addressed when or should be considered when uh, consider the, considering uh, the, the uh, collections to be put on display. The first question to consider is why focus on aircraft at first? I'm speaking from the viewpoint of the curato curatorial staff and in theory aircraft are no different than other objects in our museum collections. We have, as said, we have everything ranging from well, small aviation themed object, uniform, memorabilia and uh, everything, uh, all the way to large airliners and in uh, in this total technically the aircraft are just objects among objects that have a slightly bigger length and wingspan than than others however in practice the uh, choice of aircraft and other objects of the same size affect the exhibition design process and uh, in, mo in the most extreme cases even the design of the entire building so that they uh, need to be decided in the very first steps of the uh, exhibition process. Basically uh, if you are talking of smaller objects you can uh, draw a showcase in the exhibition and decide the content of the showcase later on, but you cannot do the same with uh, aircraft. So that is that is why we're talking of uh, aircraft in particular today. The second question is uh, probably one of the biggest ones. Do we really need to cut down the number of aircraft on display? And there are a few viewpoints to this, this uh, question. First, of course, the exhibition designer's point of view. Uh, the fewer the exhibition, fewer the exhibits, they leave more space for customer experience and visitor experience. So uh, you can, uh, if you if you have a more spacious exhibition, uh, the visitors can walk around the uh, exhibits. They can see them better. Uh, we can add some. Uh, some element, other elements around them, uh, descriptive elements, uh, exhibition technology and such. We can even build uh, things like dioramas around the exhibits and so forth. So it gives more uh, options for exhibition design if we have uh, fewer objects to fit in the exhibition. But also uh, from a curatorial viewpoint, uh, the large ob objects tend to overshadow smaller ones. Uh, once I participated in a, in a seminar uh, which discussed the collections of the Aviation Museum and one of the comments, commenters said that, that aviation museums are practically airplane museums. But in my opinion, that is not the case. Uh, we have many other objects uh, in our collections that are definitely worth 
putting on display. And I'll give you an, an example here, one which in my opinion is one of the uh, undisputed hidden gems of our museum collections. This is a, a ventilator shaft of uh, a Junkers Ju-52 airliner of the Finnish airline company Aero, present-day Finnair. Uh, this kuva, kuva ei näy. Oh. Kyllä näkyy monitorilla ainakin. Näkyykö nyt? Se mulla näkyy. Okay. Nyt tuli. Nyt tuli. Okay. There yeah, seems to be a, a, a sl slight delay when, when loading the uh, the photographs, unfortunately, due, due to uh, internet connection issues, probably. Uh, anyway, this uh, ventilator shaft be uh, belonged to an to the airliner Kaleva, and uh, Aeros Kaleva was shot down by Soviet bombers in June 1940, uh, just off the coast of Estonia during the Second World War, crashing into the Baltic Sea and killing everyone on board. And this is probably one of the most dramatic occurrences in uh, the history of Finnish uh, air travel. The shooting occurred, as said, during the Second World War. However, uh, it occurred during a time uh, in which Finland and the Soviet Union were not at war uh, between each other. So it was the interim peace between the Winter War and the Continuation War a very uh, politically tense period. Uh, the exact uh, motives behind the shooting remain unclear. It was probably uh, just a human error or misjudgment from the Soviet, Soviet sides uh, related to the Balt blockade of the Baltic states and so. This shooting was witnessed by Estonian fishermen who hurried to the spot to search for su survivors, but uh, they were repelled by a Soviet submarine who confiscated everything the fishermen were able to salvage from the site. However, one of the fishermen managed to take possession of this shaft and, and kept it. Uh, later giving it to a Finnish soldier who, who in turn uh, years and decades later donated it to the Finnish Aviation Museum. And uh, nowadays this shaft is the uh, only physical piece of evidence uh, remaining from the Kaleva. Despite several attempts, the wreck of the airliner has never been discovered. In my opinion, this object is of paramount importance for Finnish aviation uh, history, and it should definitely be put on a pedestal in our ex uh, exhibition. But the problem is that, at least in our current exhibition, we cannot fit a pedestal. We could perhaps squeeze in a small showcase, but no one would really notice it, notice it from between. So that is one of the, the major issues, in my opinion, uh, when, when exhibition get over, uh, over crammed with uh, large exhibits. However, uh, there are certain other issues related to this, this uh, question. A very practical uh, issue is that the fewer uh, large objects we have in the exhibitions, 
uh, the more we need to rent external storage space, which of course in turn increases costs. So uh, that is a very blunt and practical question, but also something to be kept in mind. But also, uh, when people visit aviation museums, they expect to see airplanes there. Now, uh, I did a personal short, very unofficial survey a, uh, some time ago. Uh, I went to Google and typed the best aviation museums in the world. And uh, this search led me to an uh, article by CNN Travel from 2018, listing the top 20 aviation museums in the world. And uh, I found this article uh, interesting because it was written by sort of regular travel reporters. Uh, there were a lot of articles and, and forum discussions and, and such by uh, aviation aficionados, so to speak. Uh, but I thought that this this article might uh, might offer more of a sort of a layman's uh, opinion on the matter. Uh, I read the article and I quickly analyze the sort of praise words and attributes and adjectives related to these museums on the list. So, so that uh, what actually makes uh, an aviation museum uh, a part of the top 20 list in the world. And uh, the results were actually quite quite, well, traditional. In 19 cases out of uh, 20, the, uh, the descriptions mentioned the aircraft on display. And in 13 cases, uh, the uh, descriptions men mentioned the sheer number of uh, aircraft in, uh, in or, or on display. So uh, in one case, it was mentioned that that uh, an aviation museum that only had 50 airplanes on display was a particularly small one, but otherwise interesting. And the ones worth mentioning had uh, collen collections of like 150 plus airplanes. In other words, uh, exhibition, well, exhibition design and, and sort of clever technologies were only mentioned once on this list. So uh, people clearly have an expectation to see uh, a plethora of aeroplanes when they do come, come to an aviation museum. And uh, if we are to take those uh, aeroplanes away from the exhibition, we need to uh, provide something else instead. Uh, we need to sort of ad adhere to the needs uh, behind those expectations. So, uh, Henry Ford, the founder of the Ford Motor Company, uh, is quoted to have once said that uh, if he had asked his customers what they wanted, they would have answered faster horses. So what Henry Ford did was that he, he uh, analyzed the need behi behind those wishes and, and uh, he found an, an alternative answer. So our challenge is, if we uh, go there, is to provide the aviation museum equivalent of the T-Ford. 
this is something that is seems to be associated with the aviation museum genre in in, in general so if you look uh, at other specialized museums such as maritime museums for instance they are uh, far less ship centered uh, for of course quite obvious reasons the 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 collections might include might include uh, boats or other smaller vessels and even even individual ships but usually the core of, of the exhibition is uh, is focused on other other uh, objects and other other parts of the collections the third uh, important question to uh, to discuss is uh, who gets to make the decisions who should participate in the decision making and how and who has the final word this is a question that uh, that is related to the to a larger question of who actually uh, get has the right to determine and define history curatorial staff of the museum who uh, upkeep the collections are and uh, are often thought to be the the experts on the the subject. What about the members of the museum administration? They what is their role in this process? Uh, they they might or might not be experts on their own right, but at least they carry the responsibility. The the uh, legal and economical responsibility of the museum and its success uh, and of course by by responsibility also comes comes the power power what about the parties whose history is involved uh, the icom code of ethics the the international council of of museums uh, is uh, emphasizes heavily on cooperation with uh, the local communities whose history is uh, represented in the museums what is their role in this process what about our other stakeholders and interest groups in our case for instance what is the role of the city of vanta What about other experts and authorities? What is the role of the exhibition designer? When I said earlier that the new exhibition can comfortably fit 10 to 20 aircraft, that is already giving the choice to the designer. What about our customers? What is their role? Should we, should we let our customers vote vote which 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 exhibits to be put on display and which which not or should it be someone else fourth question is what criteria to use in ranking the available aircraft now uh our collection policy includes a value classification tool of which uh, rates the object with numeric values and uh, these objects are rated by among others the following criteria how well the object represents the phenomenon or the phenomena uh, they are related to uh, is there available contextual information on the object or is it some or is it just an object that that nobody really knows anything about this is usually when we're talking of aircraft aircraft the the documentation is seldom that much of an issue because aircraft tend to be quite well documented objects 
what is its significance for uh, national aviation history in general, or the history of technology and other larger topics. What is the current condition of the object and what are the conservation uh, requirements before putting it on, on display? So uh, these are these are uh, the, the criteria that uh, objects are uh, ranked with uh, in within our collections. But should other criteria be applied when choosing object for exhibition? We have been discussing of things like uh, general public interest or the wow factor. Should we uh, choose aircraft that are not really that uh, that much uh, related to our topic, but would would have just the general wow factor for the general public that would attract visitors that could increase our visitor numbers? Fifth question to ask is, should we settle for what we have in our collections currently, or should we seek to replenish them? Now, of course, gathering more and new aircraft in our collections sort of contradicts what, uh, what we spoke earlier of, of the need to cut down the amount, amount uh, uh, of collections on display. But during such renovation projects, uh, renovating the exhibition gives a good opportunity to sort of think outside the box, rethink, and, and uh, that's a good place to renegotiate for new new uh, collection donations and and uh, or uh, objects to to be deposited in 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 the museum from premises and of course uh, the sixth and final question is uh, what kind of preparations does the aircraft need before being put into the exhibition? So we might have uh, we might have very interesting uh, aircraft or very or other very interesting objects which uh, just aren't in such a conditions that they could. Uh, in the given time frame, you know, be put, be uh, worked into a condition that they can be physically put on on a dis on display on in an exhibition. Now, we have approached this. Uh, these questions by practically forming three lists in which we have sort of we have went through our uh, collection of aircraft and divided divided them in three. These are uh, rough and preliminary uh, lists, and so far we this process has have has been done within our uh, curatorial stuff. But however, as as noted earlier, we uh, <clears throat> still have to have to uh, consider uh, or or we still have to. Uh, gather comments and feedback from our communities. Our first list is the so-called must-have list, and this is uh, basically the core of our uh, aircraft and large object collection that we will give our exhibition designer and we expect uh, 
them to fit them into our future exhibition. Uh, these collections include uh, these uh, or this list is uh, we try to keep it as short as possible and uh, it is limited to the aircraft that are currently uh, on display uh, either belonging to our collections or deposited to our museum. Uh, from our cur current uh, collection of aircraft, part belong to collections of other uh, museums or even private parties, but are uh, deposited to our museums museum uh, on a long term uh, contract. The second list is perhaps the most uh, most interesting and uh, and uh, flexible one. It is the nice to have list. It is basically the the uh, aircraft that uh, we would like to see in our collection uh, or our uh, future exhibition, but uh, that but which can be sort of negotiated. And uh, here we have listed also some aircraft that uh, are not currently in our uh, in our museum, but might bring some some added value to our exhibitions. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, but if and probably when we need to prioritize, we will prioritize the, the uh, must have list first and then go to the nice to have list. And finally, we have the third list, which is the uh, might consider list. So uh, it's in in the exhibition project progress. It's always to have good to have a sort of a reserve list. So if in the perhaps uh, unlikely scenario that that we actually have some extra space in our, our exhibitions that needs to be filled with something, it's good to have some some uh, reserves to throw in if, if needed. And uh, so far so far, uh, we have we are just working on the base of these lists, and uh, later on, when our designs for both the upcoming museum building and uh, also and and the exhibition uh, proceeds, then we can start narrowing down these lists and uh, actually make making the actual choices from those lists. Now, what are the next steps in our project? So, how, how does our project proceed from here? The uh, city of Vanta verified its participation in the project already last summer, which we are uh, very uh, grateful for. And uh, we are currently negotiating for governmental funding. Uh, we are hoping to see some uh, results uh, the following spring, hopefully around March to April or something like that. And uh, if everything goes as planned and we manage to secure the public funding for our project, the uh, actual project should launch next year, perhaps late late in the spring to to through to the summer and, and autumn. And that is that is when we actually st start to design the upcoming museum building and the exhibitions. And uh, so if everything goes as planned, uh, according to our current schedule, uh, we should be open to open the new aviation museum in 
2025. So uh, at that point, you are hopefully uh, hopefully able to to uh, or, or I am actually hopefully able to provide you so, with some answers to these questions that I have uh, discussed here in this presentation. Now, uh, I see the I am a bit ahead of schedule. We have uh, 15 minutes or, or 14 minutes until the, the uh, next prese presentation. So, so uh, we should have at least some time for discussion if, if questions are to arouse. OK, thank you, Valerie. Good points you, you gave us and good questions and even some very nice answers. <laughs> there are, of course, many possibilities to solve those things. Uh, one interesting detail came to my mind. Uh, total whole aircraft or parts in Germany. They got they had a historical Boeing 737 called the Landshut, which one was uh, hijacked by Barra Meinhof and the Palestinians, and now they brought it back to Germany. Then comes the question where to put this very historical aircraft uh, at, at the moment in very bad condition also, so it needs, it needs to be done something. So one museum wants, wants the aircraft, but they don't have space for it. The other, they don't want it. It doesn't fit it. Air Force Museum, for example, no, this is not not a military aircraft, so it doesn't belong to us, and and so on and so on. Then then comes one museum that they say, well, we we would we would we would like to have the door, the the very <laughs> very very uh, famous point where the captain was was uh, shot. By the, by the hijackers and so on. So this question comes all, always. The objects are too large and we don't have space for them. How to solve this this question? And really, you you gave the the chooser for us what to make, but when the decision comes, so it's not so it's not that easy, I guess. Yeah. So uh, one question: Do you have any examples? At the moment, you have these three lists must have, nice to have, and might consider some some aircraft types in the collection at the moment. Well, um, since the the since we are still in a very preliminary stage, I, I try not to not not to give too too many concrete examples because they tend they often tend to to perhaps draw draw focus on on the the uh, so, sort of not that not that uh, relevant topics but but for instance uh, we have in our collections the uh, Convair Metropolitan airliner and uh, that is and so, and a couple of other large uh, large airliners, uh, the DC-3 and uh, the Lockheed Lodestar. And uh, these we have basically used in sort of benchmarking or, or marker points when when we have been negotiating the, the sort of minimum viable requirements for the new new exhibition space because uh, they they are all crucially important uh, in their own right uh, in the historical context and also they are uh, they are aircraft that are due to their sheer size if they were to be put in storage facilities they would most likely never ever see daylight again so so 
uh, at least those are pro are very much on our must have list. Yes, uh, there is big danger that if you don't get them now, so you lose it yeah. forever. Yes. And then, of course, there are several smaller aircraft that you have look alike, quite many look alikes, but everybody has their own history and and yeah. uh, how it fits to the total picture then. Yeah. Wow factor. You need to have you have need to have visitors, visitors, and you need to have those factors, but always, always maybe the historian is not keen on those things. And then then uh, from personal experience, I know that there are a lot of people who, who just come to watch the aircraft. They don't they are not so much interested of, of these interesting small pieces like you saw from the the Kaleva aircraft. Yeah, yeah, but, that's true. Uh, but of course, then the, yes, I could I could give the counter question, quite counter argument related to the wow factor is that that uh, in my opinion, museum pretty, pretty much uh, museums very much make the values and define the values of dev different objects and that they the museums can actually affect which one which objects become the wow factors and which do not so so i think probably the most famous example in history is the painting mona lisa uh, in louvre in paris which uh, was originally considered one of leonardo da vinci's lesser works but uh, since it was stolen from the museum and the museum actually turned the 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 incident into sort of a publicity event it's now probably one of the best known pieces of art art in the entire world so, so and that is very much due to the active participation of the museum itself yeah brings people to the museum brings money to keep whole yeah. museum Running. So the micro microphones are open. If anybody has question, please you can ask them. We are not in in a hurry. We have still time for the next presentation. Yes. You see, Mike has. Yeah. His hi. Hand up. Hi, hi Valeri. Um, really interesting talk. Thanks very much for uh, for delivering that. Um, and I recognize a lot of those themes and a lot of those questions that um, you, you, you've mentioned. And as for the wow factor, um, I think it is an important thing that s sometimes people want to appreciate an object on a purely sculptural level. And um, a lot of people are attracted by that. Yeah. Um, and not everybody will be drawn into the stories that we care about. So I think having a purely technical grounds for something to be there, like this is a great example of type. Uh, yeah. We also, as an aviation museum, do have a duty to portray just purely technical history too. So I think we can allow ourselves to do that. Yeah, that's but true. I thought it was very interesting what you mentioned about the article. Uh, about this kind of apparent gulf between apparently what museums might say they want and what the public say they want. And this is very interesting. I mean, as my life as an objects conservator, I am continually not doing or doing things which appear to be at odds with what other people would want. So I'm kind of professionally used to it. Um, but we, you, there are lots of ICOM guides, aren't there, which tell you that um, that you, what, you you have responsibility to have genuine objects and they have to relate to genuine stories. So you have to deliver that. Um, but it is, I mean, I have no real question here or any real conclusion, but it is a continual um, sort of struggle really of, uh, of how to present that in a way that pleases most of the people most of the time. And that is a very, very difficult balance um, to, to strike. And um, yeah, it's just it's comforting to hear that other museums are having the same dilemmas. 
Yeah, yeah, that is true. And, and and of course, the unfortunate reality is that we also also need to think about the funding and the money and the income to to be made made by the museum. And and unfortunately, the exhibition are also in in the sort of core of of the business model of of museums in in, in the present world, and that is that is something that we just cannot ex escape from. But uh, hopefully, Absolutely. of course, we can combine the the contents and the interesting stories with the money making and, and sort of make the audiences actually so interested that they actually pay for the content that we provide so that we don't need to provide provide the content and then some extras for for making the income. I think that's quite right. So you got to get people in there. And I'm one museum I worked in. We would get a lot of feedback on written comments um, saying I'm not interested in aviation, but my um, you know, my my child made me come here because they were um, and I was very surprised and I loved the content and I loved all of the history and the stories you were telling. So it's getting them there in the first place. But when they are there, they very often do like the stories we're telling. Yeah, that's true. OK, and uh, if if there is somebody who wants to uh, comment something also in Finnish language, so please you can also say say your thoughts. We are not only restricted to English in this this case. Eli Suomeksi voi kommentoida, jos haluaa joku jotain tuoda esiin. No more comments. Then we are 